Hello, City Church family. I'm so thrilled to get to share with you tonight. Pastor had asked me if I would share the word with you guys tonight. And what an honor it is. And um, what a tall order because I do enjoy hearing our pastor speak so much. And I know you do as well. But I believe that the Lord's really put something on my heart for us to just think about. You know, there's so much going on, so much turmoil going on in the world today. And so tonight I'm going to speak to you about, do you understand? I mean, how many times have we said that to our children or said that to other people? Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? So today we're going to talk about understanding. Um, we have so many prayer requests going on around the church. Thank the Lord. We, we do not have a COVID outbreak, but I really appreciate our pastor's leadership and saying, hey, let's just take a break on Wednesdays in August to give people time to listen to their bodies and see what's going on. Um, we hate not getting together midweek. I love our midweek services, but praise God for technology where we can all come together tonight um, as one online and to share the gospel as well. So let's be praying for our church family because they do have relatives and, and extended family members who are sick with COVID, but also just various uh, things going on in Afghanistan, of course. We need to be praying for the missionaries, be praying for the people there, for even the lost souls there, that salvation and revival take place in the midst of this heavy affliction. So um, right now we're gonna go ahead and open up with prayer and um, then we'll jump into the word. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank
And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. We've got to remember he's God. Terrible things will happen. Hard times will come, but we've got to remember who is on. He is on the throne. He is God. There's so many times, you know, if, if I make a Play-Doh mold, I'm not going to expect the mold to talk back to me and say, why'd you make me look like that? That's crazy. Why'd you form me into a snake? Why'd you do this? No, we don't, we don't ask the creator. We don't usually have, you know, if I sew a dress, the dress isn't going to say, hey, what's wrong? Why'd you choose this fabric? What's wrong with you? No, that would be crazy. We're the creation. He's the creator. And so there's a time where we have to make sure we just trust in him and honor him. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 16, it says, For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. Okay, so, so who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? We understand that no one can know the Lord's thoughts. We can't we can't know enough to teach him. We have the mind of Christ, therefore we know he's God. We're not. And because we do have the mind of Christ, we know there is a higher power. There is someone named God that can can rule and do as he chooses. And we don't have a say in that. In Hebrews 11 and 6, it tells us, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But without faith, this is such a common passage. Most everybody knows this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You see it on t-shirts. You see it on bumper stickers. You see it on home interior decorated, you know, pieces for the wall. With, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But many times we forget this in our actions and in our vocabulary. And how we respond to things, we forget, hey, we've got to have faith in this matter. The Lord understands when, when we're burdened, when our heart is heavy, when we sorrow, when we grieve. But he also sees those times when we panic. When, when we hit the panic button, when we start stressing and have a, have a come apart because we feel like our life is, is going to just shattered into a million pieces because of something a doctor had told us, because of a bill that we got in the mail, because of something our spouse or a relative may have told us, we feel shattered, incomplete, and like our life is over. And we allow anxiety to come in when we get that um, pink slip and when we allow that anxiety to come in and that shows God, you you know what God I don't trust that you're my provider I don't trust that you are faithful to take care of me I don't trust that you have me engraved in the palm of your hand you see it's important how we respond to things I was um, my son was listening to a song the other day and it was it was saying something like God do you see us God do you see us and you know, I don't. I think it's important that we don't listen to the, like stuff like that over and over. I know in the scriptures sometimes you see the psalmist questioning certain things, but when over and over we're asking God something that His Word has already clearly told us, like His eye is on the sparrow and He watches over us. His Word tells us that. His Word even tells us that the very hairs of our head are numbered, and we're gonna say, God, do you see us? Where is the faith in that? No, we have to stop. We have to take control of this unruly member because many times this unruly member, it's showing God what we believe in. Are we gonna believe the report of the world? Or are we gonna believe the report of the Lord? And we've gotta show that by, by our actions, by what we say, by how we respond. Yes, life will knock you down. Yes, you will have hard times. But when that comes, you must go into your prayer closet. You must go into that the presence presence of the Lord and pour your heart out and say, you know what? It's okay to say, God, I don't understand, but I know that it's all working together for my good. I say this all the time and it probably burns people out, but I've learned this when I was a young child that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That one simple scripture, if all of the word is, is wiped away from us, if we have that one scripture and know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Do you love the Lord? Are you called according to his purpose? Then guess what? Even when it hurts, it's working together for your good. In fact, it tells us in James to count it all joy. 
to count it all joy. Count every single one of these trials that you fall into. Count them as joy because God is giving us what we need. You know, when you have a newborn baby and they get a congested nose and you have to take that big blue bulbous thing with the tip on it and you have to stick that in their nose and you have to suction things out. You know what, that child is thinking, what are you doing? You are trying to suck my brains out. They're traumatized and they're miserable. But we as the parents know that they're not gonna be able to breathe properly at night when they're sleeping. They, we know that they're gonna feel better when that comes out. You know what, there's so many times that there's a big blue bulbous thing that sometimes it feels like it's being shoved up our nose. But God's saying, you know what, if you'll be patient, if you'll count this as joy, I've got you. I've got you right now in the palm of my hands, and I know it hurts, but you don't see the big thing. You see, that newborn, that toddler does not see the big picture. All they know is there's a big blue thing being shoved up my nose and making a hideous noise. And they don't understand, but we understand. Guess what? The Creator, He understands what's going on. We can't. Our finite minds are not big enough to know what the Creator is doing. And He also knows that there's a thing called eternity. What is here and now is quickly passing away. It will quickly dissolve away. It's like a vapor. And so the Lord is trying to do a perfect and complete work in us. So we got to stay on that potter's wheel. We can't say, that's it. I don't understand. I'm done. I'm out. Give it up. No because then you're not gonna see that perfect and complete work accomplished in your life. You don't understand it, but we trust him. That's what we have to say. God, I don't understand, but I trust you. You see, there's a difference in how the believers respond to adversity, how they respond to evil things happening in the world. We don't understand it. It's heartbreaking, it's upsetting, but all we can do is pray and trust that the Lord is going to work this together. He's taking care of his people. He's taking care of the ecclesia, the church, and making sure that they get to the other side in victory and also that his word will run swiftly. And so in Ephesians 1 and 18, the apostle, he's praying for the body of Christ and he prays that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. You see, it's God's desire for our understanding to be enlightened. And so, so many of the people in, people in the world would feel like your understanding would be enlightened by reading droves of books. Reading is great. We should all read. Reading is important, but we can't count on our understanding coming from a college class, a university class, a seminary, a seminary semester. We can't depend upon our understanding to come from there because we as the believers, we understand in a different way, in the only way that true understanding comes. And he is asking, the apostle was praying that our understanding would be enlightened, for it to be enlightened. So as we grow in Christ, our understanding should be enlightened. But then in Ephesians 4 and 17, we see the flip side of that principle. Ephesians 4, 17 through 18, his word says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their minds, having their understanding darkened. They walk in the futility of their minds, and as a result, their understanding is darkened. A lot of times, you've got a lot of know-it-alls. They feel like they know everything, but the Lord is just sitting back and saying, this is foolishness. It's futility. In the futility of their mind, they've had their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. You know, we know in the Word it says that the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. And we see all over the world, there's no fear of the Lord. There's no reverence of the Lord. As a result, their, their eyes have been darkened. Their understanding has been darkened. They are looking through a cloudy glass, no doubt, and they have had their understanding darkened. They're not good. So many times we watch the news and just, ah, why can't they see this? Why can't they see that this is happening? You know why? Because their understanding's been darkened. They don't fear the Lord, and so therefore there is no wisdom. And that's where the problem, the root problem is, is they don't fear the Lord. In Romans 1 and 21 through 22, it says, for although they knew God, now this is scary, they knew God, 
Although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. You see, they knew God. You know, they knew him. They knew who he was. We know people who they've grown up in church. They've been in the church uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, back in the old school when we would have all of those premies. They grew up in that, but somehow something happened. And what was it? It said they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking. You see, we've got to beware of this. Do we honor him as we should? We should fear and guard against futile minds. We need to make sure that we are not becoming so worldly that we forget to honor God and we dishonor him. Do we remember in 1 John it says, whoever loves the world, the love of God is not in them. It's not our job to love the world. Yes, we love souls. We want to see souls one. But this world has absolutely nothing for us. Do you understand that the enemy, the adversary of our soul, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy us, each and every one of us. So when we start thinking the world's just so cute and so cute that we've got to go ahead and miss all the services that are available to worship the Lord. We've got to go ahead and take our tithe money and put it in the cuteness of the world. There's trouble there because we're not honoring God. Not only, it's not just about money. It's not just about tithe. But honestly, if you don't honor God with your actions, it's going to be truly hard for you to honor him with the tithe. And so we want to make sure that we honor God, that we include him. And not only ourselves, but our brothers and sisters in the Lord. When we see one another slipping, we need to somehow, in the, with the love of Christ, reach out to that person. If it's not where you can just up front address it to them, you feel like there will be too much offense and, and you will turn them away forever. We need to be praying over those who have stopped honoring God in their actions. They honor the world more than they honor God. That's a dangerous place to be. And we need to make sure that when we see someone slipping away, we've got to make sure that we try to pull them from that pathway. Because listen, their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. They became so book smart. They became so smart in what all of the theologians had to say and how they reasoned out everything in God's word and took the mystery out of God. They felt like they figured him out. You know what? As soon as you feel like you've got the perfect method, God's going to sort of swap it around because he's God. And he tells us in his word, hey, my ways are higher than your ways. And so we want to make sure that we honor him, honor him in our, in our words and our deeds and what we say and how we, how we spend our day. Are we honoring God every day? Did we give him time in the word? Have we started spending more time on the internet more time on Facebook, on social media, more time watching the sports and the news than we spend honoring him by reading his word. You know, his word is the game changer. When we decide to let his word go dusty in our home and we decide, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to go to church on Sundays. I even go to church on Wednesdays. Listen, let me tell you something. You've got to have that daily adjustment. You know what happens, you know, what foot washing, you can look at this, you know, Jesus saw foot washing as important. He washed the disciples' feet. And listen, foot washing was important because listen, they would go through, they would go all through um, the dusty roads with sandals on and they would, they would go and they would get so dusty and you can imagine what those feet would get like, just cruddy and yucky and gross. And then they'd have to go in and they would wash the dirt off of their feet. You know what? As we we walk through this world every day we are so surrounded by so many influences we see so many YouTube videos we see so many shows we hear so many uh, controversial things so many arguments guess what that is that's dust that's the worldly dust all over us and we've got to wash our feet with the Word of God by getting in cracking over that book every single day do you want to make it make it to heaven well you need to make sure that you've got his word in your heart every single day 
because the world is constantly trying to change our mind, trying to form our mind, conform our mind. Remember in Romans 12, it says, don't be conformed to this world. The world is trying to shape us into its mold. It's trying to make us like everything that the world likes. But what does God's word tell us? We should hate the world. We should not want to be what the world has. The world will burn with a fervent heat. But those whose life is trusted in Christ, we will live on for all of eternity with no more tears, no more sorrow, no more sadness. We will have him and we will be at his right hand. But do not forget to honor God because your mind will become darkened. We don't want to have a darkened mind. We want our understanding enlightened. And then do we, so in Hebrews 11 and 3, it says, by faith we understand the worlds were formed by the word of God. It's by faith that we understand that the world was created. It's not by books. We can't go and find a, a, a science book that'll tell us the recipe for how the world was formed. No, the book we find is God's holy word that says that it was formed by the very words of God and humanity cannot understand that. There's a joke about a scientist who said, you know what God, I've decided we don't need you anymore. We have found out how to clone a human and we're good. You can go off and continue in your day of rest. We don't need you anymore. And God patiently listened. And he said, okay, I'll tell you what, let's do something fun. Let's have a man-making contest. The scientist, yeah, I like that idea. Let's get that. So the scientist is ready, game on. He pulls up a big pile of dirt and God said, no, 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 you get your own dirt. You see, God, with his very words, he created dirt. He created from that dirt. He created man, and then he breathed his breath into man. And it was all by his word. There was no ingredients that caused it to happen. It was by his word. And how can we understand that? Our carnal mind cannot understand that. That's where the, why there are evolutionists all around this world. That's why there's atheists, so-called atheists, all around this world. But they that believe, we know by faith. You see, faith is the evidence of things not seen. We don't see it. We don't see a recipe. We don't see earth making substance. I don't see it, but there's faith in me that understands. And so by faith, we understand. Why is the world going through so many hard things? Why do people get cancer? Why do young children get abused? We don't understand. We just have to know, God, I trust you. I trust that the whole world is in your hands and we do know that sin came into the world and that's where this hardship is coming but we know with God every good and perfect gift comes from him if it's good if it's something that you love and then you enjoy that's not a sin it came from God and so we need to rejoice that we know the God who created every good and perfect gift. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. People don't understand why we believe. If they have a futile thinking, futile minds, they don't understand the things of the Spirit. They can't grasp it. And he's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. We must have the eyes of our understanding enlightened. We've got to be enlightened by his Spirit, by faith, by digging into his Word. Our understanding grows deeper and richer. But you see, we can't get in the pig pen of debate. Yes, we can understand the world's understanding is wrong. It's darkened. It is not true. It's not factual. We are based on faith and faith is what moves mountains. And so we don't need to get in the pig pen of debate. We don't need to go and find these atheists and debate with them and, and knock them. I, some people do that and it's okay, but we can't get carried away with that. In Titus 3 and 9, it says, avoid foolish controversies genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. So many times we have to, we think it's so important to get on our soapbox, and then we miss the whole point. 
We miss the whole point. The only way that mankind can repent is if the Lord gives them a spirit of repentance. And the only way this can happen is by the work of God. And the word tells us that when we ask, we will receive. When we seek, we will find. When we knock, the door will be open. And it also tells us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous one avails much. Does it make sense that getting on your knees and saying words to a God you can't see that it really makes a difference. No, it doesn't make sense. But by faith, we understand. And by faith, we understand. And I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen how the words that come out of my mouth, I could never cause these things to happen. There's no, no substance that could cause these things to come forth. But I had faith and believed that God heard me. And you've had faith before and believed that God heard you and you've seen mountains move. Now let's do that for those who lack understanding, for those who are caught up in, in all of the wretchedness of sin. It's time for us to, by faith, by faith, seek God on their behalf. There's no need to debate. We can let the Holy Spirit do a work in their hearts that only he can do. And he can put the words in our mouth where we can speak truth right into that situation and that person's heart can become softened. And see, many rage against the Lord. There's so many people who they, they are angry at God. They're angry at the situation and circumstances in their life. But listen, they want to blame God. But look at what Proverbs 19 and 3, it says, When a man's folly brings his way to ruin, when a man's folly brings his way to ruin, his heart rages against the Lord. You see, there are so many, they live in folly. They're wasteful with their days. They're wasteful with their lives. They run after the cravings of their flesh. They run after the lust of the world, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And they want to go ahead and run after the things that the world has for them when they know it's wrong, when they know they're in sin. And then when they hit a wall, who do they shake their fist at? They shake their fist at God. And we've got to make sure that we are not those people, that we've got to make sure that we walk according to God's will, that we honor him every day, that we give him the first part of our day with our prayer and our praise and our study and his word. It's important what we do. Our routine matters. It shows God. It's important to God. God had a routine. In seven days, he created the world. And on the seventh day, he rested. He had a routine. He had a routine at the certain part of the day. He would walk with Adam and Eve. We need a routine that's honoring God. Show him that you honor him by starting off the first part of your day by saying, God, I give you this time. Read his word and pray and seek him and watch God move in your home, in your life, in your family, and watch the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That's what I want. I want my understanding enlightened. It's not going to come from a huge university degree. Don't get me wrong. Education is fantastic. It's great. But the only way we're going to have true understanding is by faith. By faith, by faith, the world, the, we know that by faith, that the world was formed by the words of God. Does that make sense? No. But by faith, we know it's true and we believe it in Job 28, 28. And this is what he says to all humanity. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. It's our job to shun evil. Flee the very presence of evil. Let's quit flirting with evil. Let's quit thinking it's cute to look like evil. No, if we want understanding, then it says we've got to, we've got to flee evil. We've got to forsake evil. That's where real understanding comes. And we as the redeemed, we celebrate the fact that we are engraved in the hands of the one that formed the entire universe with his words. What a powerful thing. All he has, all you need today is for God to decide that he's going to answer that prayer. And with his words, it's done. That's the kind of God we serve. He doesn't have to put on his work clothes. He doesn't have to roll up his sleeves. He doesn't have to go ahead and take his vitamins. No, with his word alone, with his word alone, that prayer request can be answered at his word. And he is our father. All we have to do is crawl in his lap and let him know what's on our heart. 
But his word clearly tells us you have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. Oh, in Romans 10, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. It's unsearchable. We don't understand why certain things go the way they do for certain people. We can't understand all things. We're just the creation. We're just the clay. He's the potter. And his ways are past finding out. The only way that we can understand is by faith. So I want to encourage you today. How do we get more faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Tonight, we have all received a big dose of faith because we've heard his word. But then we can read his word. Happy is he who reads the word of God. We need to get in his word, especially as times are changing, as the days are growing darker, we need our understanding lighter. We need our understanding enlightened. And the way we do that is we dig deep in to God, into his word, in prayer, in praise, in seeking God. Right now, our 40 days of prayer and fasting are going on. And there's still a few open days. Go on the City Church website, citychurchrbc.com. Go to the 40 days of prayer and fasting. Click on that and you can scroll down and find a day to sign up. But listen, you may not be able to find a day because so many people are signing up. Do not let that be your excuse. Well, there were more, no more days. I can't fast. No, listen, there is power in fasting because we've got this spirit man warring against our flesh man. And right now with the world the way it is, we need to be starving that flesh man. We need to make sure that we don't, just like Esau did, he traded his birthright for a bowl of soup. For a bowl of soup, he traded his birthright. Let us not be like that. Look, don't let your stomach be your God. So let's go ahead and pray. Pray that God would open up our understanding, that he would touch our routines, that we would make him a priority. Go ahead and pick some days to fast. The 40 days of prayer and fasting at last till September 16th. Go ahead and dig into that. What I like to do when I fast, I like to listen to different podcasts on fasting, listen to some different people who have done who have fasted for extended fast. You'll see, you'll feel so wimpy by just fasting one day. I mean, you see these people fasting 40 days and you're like, my goodness. I need to get, need to step up my game. But let's go ahead and commit together and fast and pray. Our world needs Jesus. I need Jesus. You need Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for each of these people here. Everyone who's signed on, logged on, and that they want to hear the word of God. Lord, I thank you that your word is so powerful. And Lord, I praise you, God, that we can't understand everything. Lord, we don't understand most things. But God, we understand that you are on your throne. And we understand that we trust you. Come what may, we trust you, Lord. And we're going to count it all joy. No matter what happens, no matter what comes, we trust you. Lord, let us honor you in all that we do. That our minds not become futile. Lord, I pray that you would anoint us, God, as your servants, as your ministers, Lord. God, I pray that you would just touch each of the City Church family. God, I pray that you would keep your hedge of protection upon them. We rebuke COVID in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over every City Church attender, every one listening to this to this um, lesson, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over them. We rebuke COVID in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the plan of the enemy for their lives. And Lord, we speak healing in their homes. Lord, I thank you for healing at City Church. I thank you for a powerful service Sunday morning. We're going to have a powerful 9 o'clock and 1030 service. God, that souls are going to be saved. Lives are going to be touched. Holy Spirit, just pour through our lives. Let us push in and press into you and push back the plate, Lord. Let us crucify this flesh so that we will be ready to be used of you so that we can be close to you and ready for whatever you would have us to do. Lord, bless each person, Lord, that is uh, that is watching this. And Lord, be with them. Go before them. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'm so glad that you were able to be a part of this, this time together in his word. And we look forward to seeing you Sunday morning, 9 or 1030. See you then.